Hello, my name is Mr. Maths. Today I'm going to be talking about multiplication and division of ten, one hundred, and a thousands. So, we'll start with multiplication first. I will be doing this, explaining this, along with how to do this with decimals, so it's, which is a slightly different way to conceive it. Okay? So, let's start with a really simple number. 12 multiplied by 10 equals. Now, I'll give you the answer. The answer is 120. Now, the traditional method would always be, let's just take this 0 off. Let's give it a different number, a different colour. Take this 0 off and place it on the end of our number. And that works. That, that generally works. So like if we have 12 multiplied by 100, there are two zeros here, would equal 1,200. And as you can see, these two zeros are taken off there and stuck on the end of our number. And this, this method kind of works, but we need to conceive it as this number moving left or right along the column, our columns. We need to conceive it within our column method. And this is especially useful for when we come to multiply and divide decimals. So I'm going to show you what happens when we multiply this number. So let's, go, let's put our columns in. Okay, so here's our number here. And what happens when we multiply is it moves left along our columns. And it will move left by the number of zeros that are on our number. So there's one zero there, so we'll move it left one zero. Okay, uh, one place. Let's just rub this out. And two. Of course, what we're left with here is this units column having nothing in, so we'll put nothing in it. Okay, so it's moved that way. So if we put multiply there, is that way. And divide, which is the inverse operation of multiplication, everything moves to the right. Let's just get this in camera shot here. Okay, so we'll do this again with another number and then We'll move on to dividing. Okay, let's rub this off here. Let's say we have the number seven times 10. Now, if you know your, your times tables well enough, now you'll know that the answer is 70. And like I said previously, the zero method, the adding the zero does work. So let's do, let's show that in our columns. Okay, there's our seven. We're multiplying, which means we go left. There's one zero, we go left one place. So we end up with, let's rub this out actually, make some room. We have our seven here, and we put our zero here because we've got a zero in our units column now. Okay. Let's rub this out. Let's do one more multiplication. We'll do 33 multiplied by 100. Oh, now we're going to have to use another column here. Thousand. I'll put a th. Okay, so we'll put our 33 in there. Now, equals. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to move. How many places to the left? It's going to move two places to the left because we've got our two zeros. So let's just do that. Okay. So we're starting with it here. Two places to the left. It's pointless to just write it then. So one two, so three here, and a three here. See, the whole number's moved two places to the left, 
and these columns are now empty, we will put our zeros. So the answer would be 33, 0, 0. And as we can see, we've just moved those zeros here. The zero method kind of works. So, let's just show you quickly division. Okay, let's have... 20 divided by 10. Now, because division is the inverse operation of multiplication, everything along our columns moves to the right. So we'll, we'll put 20 in there. Now, there's, as we can see, there's only one zero on our 10. So, we'll just move this number here to here. Now this is where things, we start to enter the realm of the decimal point, but we'll do that in, the, in a minute. So, because of this one zero, we move everything to the right one column, and we put our two here. Now we don't need to put this zero in unless we're working with decimals, because our decimal point is here, see? Okay, so that zero will disappear now, so the answer is 2, because it's the inverse operation. So we're not adding zeros, we're taking zeros away. Okay, let's do another one. Two hundred and ten divided by ten equals once again. Let's get rid of this. Everything goes to the right. Two hundred and ten divided by ten. There's one zero on here, so that's how much it's going to move to the right once. So where the two would be here, we're going to put it here. Two one. We don't have to have another zero because we've hit against our decimal point, so that zero will vanish. So our answer is 21. And as we can see, there was a zero here. We're dividing it. This zero disappears. But it's important to, to recognise that we're moving across these columns. We're making the number move. And it's important because of these decim this decimal place. And I'm going to show you. So let's say we have a, a large a number like this. Let's say this. 3, 1, 7. And we're going to divide it by 10. Now if you look, there are no zeros in this number. On the end, at least anyway. So we're going to put, put this in our columns, but we do remember that everything moves to the right by the number of zeros on this number here, see? So we move everything to the right, and what we need to remember is this decimal place stays in the same state, it doesn't move. So the number will move, but the decimal place won't. Let me show you. So if we move everything to the Right, one column, what we will get is that's tenths. Okay, so that's the tenths column, but the decimal point has stayed in the same place. And it's just the same with multiplication, but everything moves to the left. So let's say we have. 3.1 times 10. Let's put 3.1 in here. Let's put, I'm going to make that a little bit tidier. Let's put 10 and T H. Okay, so there's 3.1. Now everything. It's going to move because we're multiplying. We're going to move to the left. So we're going to move our number one place to the left because one place will be one zero. Okay. 
Okay. So let's just do that. Just put, replace my decimal place there. So 3.1, we move it to the left, it's going to be there, and our one's going to come here. Clean that. So our answer is 31. Let's just do our answer for this one equals 31.7. Because it, what it looks like is the decimal place has jumped, but it hasn't, everything has moved to the right on this, this top one here. And with this one, everything has moved one place, because there's one zero, to the left. Now I'm going to put some up, and I'll see if you can answer them. And then um, if, you, if you want to pause the video, and see if you can answer them, and then we'll unpause it, and see if you've got the right answers. Okay, so I'm going to give you the answers. 23 times 10 would equal 230 because we're moving one place to the left when we do multiplication. So 230, we have to put a zero in there. 35 times 100 would be 35, that's a bit of low on space, zero, zero because we're moving everything twice, there we, the three would be here, one, two, 3,500. And we'd have to put our zeros in here to designate, there's nothing to um, designate, <laughs> designate. there's nothing in the tens column and nothing in the units column. 17 divided by 10, so we're going right now, so we've had one, seven, and we move everything once there, one, and now decimal place there, put that there, Seven, so one point seven. Okay, two hundred and thirty-three divided by a hundred. Let's just give us some more space here. Remember, we're moving everything. We're dividing everything right by two places. So the two three three would be here. The two would be here. Equals two point three. 3 uh, 12 divided by th times a thousand 12 that would be three places so that would be there'd be a 10,000 column here we'll put that in in a minute it's quite difficult to get everything in here okay so a 12 would be here it's moving one two I didn't need that column Yes, I did. Three. So it's going to be here now. Twelve, zero, zero, z zero. We can see we're adding three zeros to it. But more importantly, it's moving three places to the left. And last but not least, 37 divided by 100. Let's put these answers in. Oh, 
right, 37 divided by 100. Let's clean this off. So it's going to move two places this way, so one, two. So we're going to be behind the decimal point. So what's important when we go that way behind the decimal point, we always have to make sure that people know the decimal points there. So we have to put a zero point, and then we're going to have three, seven. Okay, a lot of people would just put, oh, I don't know, 30, point 0.37, but we need that zero there just to show that we've moved that side of the decimal point. Okay. I hope you missed the maths and I'll catch you next time.